Hello everyone, this is Orlando from A Collector's Dream. And, um, you know, yesterday, uh, I, you know, how I love history, the history of baseball. And I was listening to, uh, to an interview with Ty Cobb, and it brought me back to one of my favorite cards. And I've shown this many times. This is a 1907 postcard, rookie postcard of Ty Cobb. And this is what I was listening to here. You've asked me not to make this too personal, but you have played in more ball games. You have made... Let me go back. Well, Ty, you've asked me not to make this too personal, but you have played in more ball games. You have made more hits. An interview you with Ty Cobb. And you have scored more runs than any is. player that ever lived. A record like this is a personal matter with a good many million people. First of all, I would like to ask you the biggest thrill you ever got in any one game. Well, Granlin, I've played in over 4,000 ball games in the last 25 years, and the biggest thrill I ever got came in a game against the Athletics in 1907. I was only 20 years old then, not quite 21, and it looked as if this game meant the pennant. The Athletics had us beaten with Rube Waddell pitching. They were two runs ahead in the ninth inning when I happened to hit a home run that tied the score. This game went 17 innings to a tie. And a few days later, we clinched our first pennant. You can understand what it meant for a 20-year-old country boy to hit a home run off the great Rube in a pennant-winning game with two out in the ninth. Boy. I suppose you've missed the old game a lot, Ty. All the thrills and crowds and the headlines and all. I thought I would miss it a lot, Graham, but I haven't. It's a great old game, but I've almost felt like a prisoner who was set free. Just how do you mean, Ty? Baseball, to me, was more work than play. In fact, it was all work. You see, I was lucky enough to lead the league when I was 20 years old. After that, I wanted to lead it every year. I never thought I was a, a genius, so I gave up my life to the game for 25 years. I suppose I was in nearly 30,000 plays, and I at least tried to think about every play and uh, how it should be made. Here is one example. I figured out one play to use against Hal Chase. He used to snap the ball over to third to catch me rounding the bag. I'd always slide back. I had to wait two years for the right time to work it. But one day, I just kept on going and managed to score the winning run. Did you have any set system to work on, Ty? Yes. My system was all offense. I believe in putting up a mental hazard for the other fellow. If we were five or six runs ahead, I'd try some wild play, such as going from first, first to home on a single. This helped to make the other side hurry the play in a close game later on. I worked out all the angles I could think of to keep them guessing and hurrying. Every play was a problem of some sort. That's what I meant by the strain and grind of 25 years. Who was the best pitcher you ever faced, Ty? Walter Johnson had... I'll leave it at that. But as you can see, this postcard was mailed in early 1908 from Detroit to Miss Clara Squires. I checked that address. It's now a historical house in Buffalo, New York. I haven't been able to figure out exactly who Clara Squires is, but this is what I love about history. It says, received your letter Tuesday. Uh, did Howard, Tuesday AM, did Howard get back all right? Remember, this is how they would communicate back in those days. So apparently he was traveling. He says, drop us a card and let us know. Detroit is baseball mad. So this lady idling tells Clara, Detroit is baseball mad. 
baseball mad means they are thrilled because 1907 when this card was made the Tigers got a young Cobb won the uh, championship and uh, Detroit became baseball mad and you know you heard Ty Cobb talking about the uh, the game there and uh, the 17th inning game and what happened that game was that uh they you know it was it was, it was tied they were tied right up to the end of the of the uh season pretty much the end of the season and um, it said both the tigers and athletics still had seven games to play after after the twin bill because they it was a uh a double header that was supposed to go but uh at, uh, the A's were slightly ahead at that point in the season. So um, they uh, basically, you know, just they filled the stadium to went to see that. The Philadelphia fans hoping to see the Athletics win their second pennant in three seasons were in a frenzy. By one estimate, the team could have had, have sold 50,000 tickets in Columbia Park. It said that Philadelphia quickly grabbed the lead and, uh, you know, they, they actually took the lead. The pitchers there were uh, Wild Bill Donovan. And Wild Bill Donovan was really their, their, their eighth pitcher at that time. But, uh, of course, you know, they, they, couldn't, they couldn't go the whole game. The game went 17 innings. And then um, it says that, uh, let me see here. I'm going to read to you here what happened. It said that uh, both teams scored a single run. The next at bat in Philadelphia took an 8-6 lead into the ninth inning. The A's were three outs away from reclaiming first place. Detroit center fielder Sam Crawford. There's Sam Crawford right there. Sam Crawford. And that was the pitcher. Wild Bill Donovan. That's Cobb. The manager's here, Huey Jennings. So, Sam Crawford opened the ninth with a single, bringing Ty Cobb to the plate. The 20-year-old was enjoying a breakout season as he entered the game with a league-leading 338 batting average. Cobb stunned the crowd by, by, by pounding a Waddell offering over the right field fence and onto 29th Street for a game-tying two-run homer. The towering drive, his fourth home run of the season, was roughly 50 feet off the ground when it cleared the fence. In an interview more than half a century later, Cobb admitted that he still didn't know how he did it. I just took a swipe at it, he said. So it went on the 11th inning. In the 11th inning, Cobb started a two-out rally with a double into the crowd into right field. The next batter, Claude Rossman, singled to center field and Cobb raced home with the go-ahead run. But Detroit couldn't hold the lead in the bottom of that inning. And then uh, Nichols, um, you know, hit a ball that Jones, that Davy Jones was the uh, center fielder, that Jones couldn't get, appeared to uh, lose sight of it. And then, uh, it uh, they got a hit, they got a run, and the miss had the misplay snapped Donovan's streak of 12 consecutive outs. That was Wild Bill Donovan. Uh, Philadelphia had a golden opportunity to win it in the 13th when Topsy Harville led off with a ground rule double. But the next batter, Nichols, missed a bunt attempt, and catcher Fred Payne picked off Hartzell off second base for a crucial out. So the game went on and on and on and on. And uh, at the end, it says, by the time the 17th inning began, and this Detroit team went on to win three, three American League championships. But it says at the top of the seventh, as the 17th inning began, darkness was falling, and it was obvious that it would be the final frame. Cobb, again, hit a two-out single in the top of the 17th. He stole second, then went to third on the wild throw from catcher Doc Powers 
but Cobb was stranded on the base pass. They couldn't get him in. Rookie Eddie uh, Collins, who was rookie at the time, pinch hitting for old ring, led off at the bottom of the 17th an infield single. Powers laid a sacrifice, moving the potential winning run into scoring position with only one out. By this time, it was so dark that the players could barely see the ball. But while Bill Donovan, who had won 25 games and lost four that year, he, he wanted to keep, keep playing. So Donovan refused to break. He dug deep and retired the final two batters on neat running catches by center fielder Red Downs. The game was called because of darkness, and then the doubleheader was never rescheduled. So that game is the game that Ty Cobb said was his best game ever. ever. And then after that, the uh, Detroit played, uh, they took the lead uh, because they had won the other game and they, uh, they swept the four game series from the lowly Washington Senators who were in last place and they clinched the, the, the flag and they won the championship. And Detroit, was baseball mad. They went on to win three more championships. It says Cobb finished the season with 350 batting average, earning him the first of his record 12 batting titles. Despite being the seventh youngest player in the American League, the Georgia Peach led the league in many other statistical categories, including RBIs, stolen bases, slugging percentage, OPS, and outfield assists. The Tigers went on to win three consecutive pennants from 1907 to 1909, although they lost the World Series. So that's the story of Ty Cobb, the Detroit Tigers team in 1907, who went on to win this first championship. And this is the rookie card of Ty Cobb and then champion 1907 Detroit Club. I got this reholdered. I wanted to see if they could just put 1907 because the card was produced for three years. But I know that this was a 1907 issue because obviously it was mailed in, in early 1908. It was mailed in 1908. So it, this is, has to be a 1907 card, at the worst, a, a 1908. But to me, I think it's a 1907 because of that. Detroit was baseball mad after going to the World Series for the first time with Ty Cobb, Sam Crawford, Wild Bill Donovan, George Mullen, Germany Schaefer, Davy Jones, and all of those other great players that they had at, during those days. But that's the story, and, and you heard it from Ty Cobb himself, saying that was his best game and his best memory of, of 25 years of playing ball. And that is the, uh, the card. And that's why, to me, these postcards, even though this one is a one and a half because it has the writing, the writing tells a story. And I just kind of wanted to share that story. You can imagine, look, here's the stamp. Ben Franklin, one cent stamp. Mailed from Detroit, this card has a story of the 1907 American League champion Detroit Tigers with Ty Cobb as the rookie. So thanks for sharing, thanks for watching guys. I wanted to share this story with you guys. You've seen this card before. The other thing I'll share now that I pulled something else out. You heard at the end that uh, Ty Cobb said that the best play, best pitcher he faced was Walter Johnson. So I'll share my Walter Johnson. And this also has a story, as you know. This, this picture of Walter Johnson came from Walter Johnson's personal uh, collection, personal family album. And it is an autographed photo of Walter Johnson. Best wishes, Walter Johnson, who Ty Cobb calls the best pitcher ever. So, 
I'll share more on, on Walter Johnson. I've shown this already before. It was my pickup at the National. But I wanted to share that story and, you know, that every card has a story. And if you really, you know, look into the history of the players and the card, like I said, every card tells a story. Thanks for watching, guys. Orlando from A Collector's Dream. Have an awesome, awesome day. Please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.